from that geophysics, we were able to, to take off 15 tons of graphitic ore, bring it to our plant, and now we're actually producing graphite. Talking graphite here with Volcom and then V-Bond here in Canada. Great to be visiting you guys. And um, we're talking about graphite flakes. So when it comes to picking out an ore body, we're quite selective with the mineralogy and also the, the composition of the ore. And so here on the right hand, left hand side here, you see graphite is highly intercalated into this, this ore. And so to liberate the graphite requires a lot of grinding and flotation and even our dry separation process won't be able to effectively take out this graphite. And so an ore body like this is only about 5%. So I'd have to move many tons of rock for a ton of graphite. And so maybe up to 100 tons of rock. But on the right hand side here is an iron uh, formation graphite. And you can see that it's actually layered. And so once we break the rock up and we liberate the, the graphite, it's much easier for us in our dry separation process. So we, we can do that very quickly, as has been demonstrated in some of the, the samples you see here. Um, but it's also laminated too. So um, there's laminations and you can see from here, there's a lamination of mica here. And then you can see the graphite. Uh, so it just kind of breaks away and it's much easier for us to dry process. And the other important aspect of why we're, we're selecting our, our ore bodies the way we are is the, the quality of the graphite. So the rock here that you see, you know, the head grade is around 20%, but the rocks that we see here, we see areas where we've got 40, 50, I've actually even measured 80% graphite in some areas. So if I have 40%... This is super heavy, by the way, guys. This is like 10 kilos. Yeah. So uh, if we compare this, uh, even though it's the same size to this, this feels like it's only about half the weight or even less, huh? It's actually about a third the density. Okay. Yeah. Because of the iron in here, uh, creates that weight. It causes it to be heavy. So just looking at the tonnage we have to move. If we have 20% head grade, five, six tons of ore, and we have a ton of graphite. Mm. Right. If we have a, a low grade ore body, 100 tons of ore for maybe a couple of tons of graphite. So that makes a lot more sense to find ore bodies that are economical. And to me, it's not even about size. You know, if I have a 300 you know, mile ore body at 2 to 5%, we wouldn't touch that. Right? I'd rather take a small ore body, quarry it out, and then bring out the high quality graphite. Yeah, and talking about your business here with Vault Carbon, um, you're in different areas from exploration to R&D um, to processing. So tell us a bit, how did that story evolve with Vault Carbon from where you are now? How did this go along? Well, for many years, uh, Vault Carbon was in the junior exploration space. So we'd be responsible for exploring we would raise funds to do the exploration mm -hmm. and then we'd quantify a resource and then we would still be 10 years away from building a mine. And, you know, looking at some of the areas today, those mines are in populated areas, so then the challenges are even higher. So about five years ago, we got into dry separating and the philosophy was to harness the smaller ore bodies so that we can quarry the material out. When I came on board this company, we were just in that infancy stage. Mm -hmm. And in the last five years, we've really advanced the technology. We've taken it to a new level and we've, we're starting to hit purities that have not been seen before through dry separating. And of course, there's a lot of talk about China dominating this space for, for processing. So how does the production cost here in Canada compared to those in China? And how does the ESG, the environmental impact, compare to China? Well, assuming uh, labor costs are the same, and I know it's not gonna be the same, but we're extremely excited about our process because we believe that in dry separating, the labor that we put into it is gonna be a lot less than our counterparts in China. And that's because we, you know, we don't have to do all the work in flotation and managing the tailings pond managing the wastewater system and putting in all the pumps. So that translates to a much lower kilogram of CO2 per kilogram of flake graphite concentrate. So my estimate is that we're between two and a half to three kilograms of CO2 per kilogram of flake concentrate in the traditional processes. So what they do in Asia, what they do in these plants where you have a lot of grinding and, and flotation. But our aim is to be below a quarter 
uh, kilogram of CO2 per kilogram of flake concentrate. And that is about one-tenth of, of what's being done today. And so you can almost translate that to the labor and the work that you put into it. And I would expect a, an order of magnitude lower in cost as well. Yeah, because I mean, with the higher ESG score, we've seen that in the nickel, nickel market right now, that automotive is not prepared to pay a premium, mm -hmm. that nickel is still being procured predominantly from Indonesia, which is mm -hmm. the lowest cost producer, mm -hmm. but unfortunately doesn't have such a high ESG score. Mm -hmm. So good to hear here that also on production costs, you are competitive and then you don't need uh, the shipping. You have it here right uh, in North America available for automotive. Yeah, it's right here and also, uh, you know, we've broken tradition. You know, we've actually explored some areas with Brookwood and then green battery minerals on their property. And we've been able to quarry out a, an area that actually has, does not have a 43101. Uh, you know, we did some prospecting. We looked at the geophysics. And from that geophysics, we were able to, to take off 15 tons of graphitic ore, bring it to our plant, and now we're actually producing graphite samples for our customers. So we've got the processing, we've got early exploration, but you also are into R&D. So tell us a little bit, what are you doing in that space? Well, one of the, the issues we also had was we didn't want to be a junior company that's just sitting like a sitting duck, right? You know, we're waiting on customers to test our graphite. So we thought it was a really good move to buy a battery company. So we, we purchased Solid Ultra Battery in 2021. We built this plant, we raised the funds to build this plant. We hired the best people in batteries and we started to evolve several technologies out of this plant. And you know, when you do a startup in batteries, you're not gonna, it's not gonna come to fruition the first day because you have to cycle test the batteries. And when we take the tour out there today, you'll see all the different levels of batteries being cycle tested. So the cycle testing, as you get better with your battery, takes longer because you know, maybe when we first started, we had 40 cycles and then we had side reactions and the, the battery didn't work. But now we're in the five, six, seven hundred cycles and it's taking longer to do the, those tests. Yeah, and just for comparison on an EV, for example, you have on average 5,000 cycles. So that's then a different use case or is that then just now at this stage, you're still looking to get to 5,000 cycles eventually? We're definitely looking to get the 5,000 cycles because the, the better the product we put out there, again, the better the ESG score down the road because of the recycling aspects of, of, of the, these batteries. Okay, and then talking about funding, I mean, there's a lot of funding in the Inflation Act mm -hmm. that's also accessible for companies in Canada. Mm -hmm. So you received 75,000 in, in funding already. Mm -hmm. What is there ahead for investors in 2024? Are we going to see more funding at Vault Carbon? Well, we've certainly put in applications for uh, more funding. Uh, we also have other funds that we've received, but we haven't, you know, they're small ones, so we don't really publicly release that information. But, you know, funding for employee offset salaries, uh, funding for other smaller projects, you know, we've received a lot of those and we're very grateful. But we're also applying for some larger funds and we'll have to see what happens there. Uh, but we're also going to also have to raise some public funds as well. And so we're going through an exciting time. And uh, we think that, you know, with this technology, we're going to start to move into patenting some of the stuff that we've been working on here. Okay, so funding ahead. Any timelines? When are we due to expect the funding? And you already have something to disclose on the volume. How much are you looking to uh, finance? Well, that planning is still in the work. Uh, but as you take a tour of our plant today, I'll show you where the funding is going to go. Um, okay. So we have the first phase of our plant, which is a battery lab that enables us to build our IP build our technology, but as we start to move our technology towards commercialization, there's a section in the plant floor that has been reserved to, you know, to do the phase two portion of our build, which is to transform this into a mega factory. So this won't be a gigafactory, we'll, we'll, we'll build capacity for mega factory, and our batteries will not, you know, go in automotive here. We're targeting more of an aerospace sector, maybe a, a light, uh, unmanned aerospace sector. So could that also be the EVTOL, the Archer and the Joby in, in California? Well, some of our technology and our patents could go in that direction uh, as we start to get more into the licensing of, of materials. For those not familiar, EVTOL, electric vertical takeoff and landing vehicles, kind of uh, electric helicopters, only a bit smarter and uh, with more rotors. 
we are very bullish on that. Check out our video, horses versus cars. Um, we actually think that could be a bigger driver for EV battery demand than the EVs themselves. As of 2030, of course, forward-looking uh, future statement, but we are very excited about that. So let's have a look at the plan.